This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 187 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. This tip is sponsored by Equestrian Collections for the universe of equestrian shopping at your fingertips at a price you can afford. Enjoy today's tip. Hi, everybody. Glenn the Geek back with you from Lexington, Kentucky, and you're listening to Horse Tip Daily. Well, the first thing I need to do is apologize for missing an episode last week. We normally put out five a week from Wednesday through Sunday, but last week I was at Rolex, and I thought I could get them out every morning, but Rolex turned out to be more tiring than I thought. We were doing multiple shows over there, including the eventing radio show and the Stable Scoop radio show and the 2010 radio show at the Rolex International three-day event, which is one of the largest horse shows in the country at the Kentucky Horse Park. So I was over there 14 hours a day and uh, just ran out of steam, to be honest with you. So I apologize for missing a day last week. We'll be back on track this week. I'm recording this on Wednesday, and we'll have a show every day through Sunday. The show, as you know, we put out five times a week, and we try and do it Wednesday through Sunday every week. So hopefully... This week, everything will go well, and we'll be back with you in full style with a bunch of new experts and a bunch of new great tips. Well, today we have back with us Heidi Nyland. Heidi is a noted author, journalist, producer, photographer, and avid trail rider. Her stories and photographs are seen regularly in publications such as Western Horseman, Equestrian Retailer, The Trail Rider, The Equine Veterinary Management, and she works with Julie Goodnight to produce Julie's RFD show, Horsemaster with Julie Goodnight. Heidi has actually been on with us since the very beginning. I think she was on episode number five or six. And she stops by occasionally to share with us some trail riding tips that she has learned along the way. And I just love talking to Heidi. So we'll be right back with Heidi right after we talk about the fact that you can get trail riding stuff over at equestriancollections.com. People think about equestrian collections for riding wear, for competition, but they also have the Wrangler jeans and Wrangler products of all kinds. They have a number number of different products for the trail rider so you can stop on over to equestriancollections.com and find a whole new place to buy your trail riding uh, attire and accessories for your horse as well as it's fly season and you want to try out their fly sprays fly sheets and everything else fly you can you can find it all at equestriancollections.com and now on with Heidi hi Heidi and welcome back to horse tip daily thanks Glenn it's always fun to talk to you you know, and I, I don't know if I talked to you about this since we talked the last time, but this little show, Horse Tip Daily, that I started, what, 100 and some episodes ago, um, now has uh, as many listeners as the Stable Scoop show, which is our biggest show. That's awesome. And, and yeah, we went over 7,000 listeners listen to this show every day. <laughs> well, that's great. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, and fun, short tips that people can listen to and uh, just take a little gleam of advice. And you always have the best tips. I want to tell people, go back to the website at horsetipdaily.com and go back into Heidi Nyland. Look her under, uh, look her up under experts on the left-hand side there, and you'll find all her tips in a row. You can just go in and listen to them all at once. And you just have the best tips. I just love having you on. Well, thanks. You know, this comes from a lot, a lot of the tips come from my column that I have in the Trail Rider magazine. It's called Saddlebag Savvy. And, you know, I, I can't take all the credit because I, just glean any tip that I can. I'm constantly asking my friends where they get tips and, and what would make things more fun. And, and it's, it's a lot of work. I think I've done this column for over four years now. So wow. I have to work a little bit harder, but I think sometimes that makes the tips a little bit more fun to uh, find things that not everybody else has written about too. Well, your last couple have just been fantastic. So, uh, <laughs> so I can't wait to hear what this one is. Okay. Well, this one comes from, my background as a riding instructor, I'm a NARA certified riding instructor and have, I used to um, coach the team where I went to college after I graduated. Uh, it was an IHSA college team. And so okay. I've always been very focused on horsemanship. And no matter what you're doing to actually have good horsemanship, be learning as you go, and to not just sit out there and take a trail ride and pretend that you're in a lazy boy chair. That just 
annoys me when I see people say, oh, I'm just a trail rider, so I don't need to learn something. I think, you know, if you stop learning, then you might as well die. Well, that's interesting <laughs> that you did have that background, and now I know how yeah. you ended up with Julie Goodnight and working with her. Yes, I produce her TV show, and I actually have been an, an editor at several of the horse magazines in the past and just always been focused on, on the training articles and working with different trainers and, and focusing on, you know, how can you improve yourself, improve your riding position so that you're making it easier for the horse, you know, especially if you're out on these long trail rides. Horsemanship is very important. Your position is very important. You can actually make it easier for your horse to carry you, especially if you're going on a really long ride. If you actually actively ride instead of just sitting there, you know, it's kind of like having someone on your back and you're taking them on a piggyback ride and they're asleep. You know, if you're carrying like a, imagine like a 12 year old kid that's asleep on your back, you have to work so much harder than if they're awake and, and kind of helping you maneuver and they're working with you a little bit more. So, you know, it's the same kind of thing for your horse. You can make it easier for them and have more fun and be learning more about horsemanship. All right, cool. Yeah. Okay. So, this tip kind of is just to be creative is really the biggest thing. If you're riding with a group to make some games, you know, if you're out on the highway and you're taking a road trip, um, you know, can you think of some games you'd play in the car just to kind of keep your mind active, Glenn? Yeah. Yeah. I did. We used to count the license plates from different States and you used to see what you mm -hmm. could spell and all that stuff. Um, yeah, well, you know, until the, till the brother cheated and then you ended up beating each other up in the back of the car. Yeah. <laughs> And wait, so the whole game thing turned into a nightmare for the parents. <laughs> yes, I'm going to pull this car over. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and my parents occasionally did, so. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> there were four boys. I came from a family of four boys, so uh, it was quite uh -oh. interesting in the van at times. Well, I was an only child, and I always had to entertain myself in the car, and so my mom was a kindergarten teacher. She'd load me up with all kinds of things, and that probably relates a lot to being creative nowadays and just figuring out, well, how can you entertain yourself if you're alone riding or, you know, even if you're with a group? Like, I'm always just – it's probably the camp counselor and in me, too, being a little too campy and cheesy sometimes, but it makes it fun to, you know, figure out how you can make it – a little bit more interesting, even if you're out riding with a group and it's pretty boring, just flat pasture land, there's a lot that you can do to, to have a little bit more fun and, and to create some games of your own. Do you so, have any examples? I you do. You can't count yeah, license plates, so. Exactly. You know, you, it's not necessarily the same as being in the car, but what, what you might see is like a fallen tree. So I've ridden with my friends, and every time we see a fallen tree, then we'll do a side pass. Or, you know, so you can kind of create what vegetation is in your area if you pass, maybe if you don't want to do this, if you're riding through pure pine pine tree country, but if you see a pine tree, then maybe you circle it. If you see an aspen grove, then you do so many side passes or, you know, whatever it is in your area that you can, can make up to, you know, kind of be a little bit more creative or, you know, go over if it's a, a fallen tree, you know, go out of your way if the, the footing is safe otherwise to actually make sure your horse knows how to pick up the seat and go over something and, and kind of use those those times to practice instead of to just walk by and say, oh, we had a flat trail ride, so it was boring today. Well, you know, if you were a fox hunter, uh, when you saw the fallen tree, the game is to take another drink out of the flask. But um... Well, okay, you can do that too. <laughs> we don't recommend that on trail rides. It's never really a good idea. <laughs> so. And, you know, another thing, and this comes from several um, cast members that we've had on Julie Goodnight's TV show, Horse Master, that I produced and helped find all the cast members for. And, and so many people want to have an episode about um, you know, my horse won't, he, he, he's really frustrated unless he's the lead horse. He won't stay at the back of the group. Right. And a lot of the trail riding episodes have to do with that and not being willing to, you know, really make sure that your horse is following your direction. Um, you know, and the answer with all of those cast members has been your horse has to follow your direction and not just be part of the trail ride. Cause if you don't, really be in charge and, and kind of make some of these these games your usual, you know, go-to exercises, your horse just kind of falls back into a herd mentality, follows along, and then, oh, you suddenly ask for something, and they don't 
think they have to listen to you. So really being proactive to that and having it be a game can make it more fun and help you avoid a lot of training behaviors or your horse becoming untrained down the road. Yeah, you know, one of the things we forget about is that uh, if we're getting kind of bored on the trail, your horse is bored too. <laughs> Yeah, 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 they don't want to just follow the horse in front of them and and just be kind of, you know, nose to tail all the way. So, you know, just simple things like every 15 minutes have someone be in charge, put the youngest kid in charge of, you know, timing everybody, and every 15 minutes switch who is the leader. And if you're on a flat area, kind of, you know, maybe even make some sort of play like a follow the leader or even do things, you know, with your body position, whether it's raising arms and and kind of stretching out that, you know, you can kind of make some silly fun games, but also have some fun and get a little bit more exercise out of it. Well, there you go. I think that's a great tip. And it's something that you don't think about all the time, especially if you do a lot of trail riding for long periods of time, you do need something to break up. It does get monotonous. I don't care how pretty it is. Um, Right. Yeah. So good. Great. All right, Heidi, where can people find out more about you? Sure. My website is wholepicture.org, and there's a lot of my photographs and links to different articles that I've written. And then also, you know, check out the Trail Rider magazine and my column there. And, uh, you know, if you have some tips, I'd be glad to hear them because I, I'm always looking for fun, kind of just different things that are uh, are fun for people and actually are, are workable and usable out on the trail. And we have your contact information at horsetipdaily.com. Just look under the Experts tab at the top of the page to Heidi Nyland, and you'll find her contact information and her website all listed there. So, well, we appreciate you being on again. It's always fun to have you on, and it's always fun to get caught up on what's going out on out there in Colorado. Well, thanks again to Heidi. I look forward to having her back on the show. It's always, I just have a great time speaking with her every single time, and it's fun to learn uh, the tips for the trail. Well, also check out the Eventing Radio Show. We did five episodes from Rolex last week. And on the last episode, we had a special co-host, a very special co-host, NBC star of the... The NBC star, really, of the Kentucky Derby. That's uh, Donna Brothers. She's the one out there riding the horse, interviewing the jockey at the end. And she was actually uh, on with us. She knows a bit about about eventing and was on the last episode with Chris, reviewing the Rolex uh, coverage, reviewing the Rolex three-day international event. So you can check that out at eventingradio.com. You can find all of our other great shows on the network at horseradionetwork.com. You can also subscribe to the show through iTunes or Zoom and get the daily tips automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zoom, or MP3 player. And you can follow us on Facebook. Just search for Horse Tip Daily. Or you can follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. Well, I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip, and we'll try and stay on schedule this week. Until then, stay safe, everyone.